What's up everyone? It's been a couple weeks since I filmed the last pickups video. That's because last weekend I was at the Too Many Games convention. I had an amazing time. I filmed a video game sellers episode from there that went up a few days ago. If you're wondering why I don't have a mustache or a soul patch right now, go check out that video. It's one of my favorite episodes I've ever filmed. The uh, Bad Graphics Gamers are the ones that made this go bye-bye. Uh, the link to their channel is in the About section down below. I actually have to give them shout-outs for all of July and all my videos because of a challenge we did. Again, go check out the Video Game Sellers episode to find out what happened. Um, as for the pickups today, I did not go garage sailing. Um, I'll explain that in a second. The half of the stuff I'm going to show you is uh, things I got from the Too Many Games convention. So lots of rare items, lots of stuff from my collection. Um, but I did get some other things this week and some stuff from today. Um, and of course we're going to do the random game giveaway in this video as well, so stay tuned for that. Um, the reason why I didn't go ground shelling, yesterday on Friday, I went uh, and dug through a guy's sheds and a trailer at his house for four hours. Um, spent a little bit of money and got a lot of stuff. That's its whole own video. That is going to be up, that's going to be up uh, this coming Wednesday. So check that out when that goes up. Too much stuff I got there to mix it into this video. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for that coming up on Wednesday. Um, so that's sort of why I didn't really go garage shelling. I already got so much stuff and spent some money. So I decided to sleep in today and just go to uh, some pawn shops. So first up, we'll just cover what I got today. And that would be... This little stack right here, nothing spectacular, but you always got to pick up, you know, the Wii Sports or Wii Sports Resort games. These are three bucks each. I grabbed them at the same store. Um, actually, the store was doing like 20% off, so whatever the 20% off would have been made them down to $3 a piece. And there was no tax on them. I'm sure there was tax. They always got to charge tax, but it worked out to three bucks each. Uh, then we got Super Mario Galaxy. I picked that up for five bucks. Very clean copy. Um, and then Namco Museum Virtual Arcade also grabbed that for $5 as well. Um, they had a few other games that were just on the border, like in between the $5 and $8 range, but they weren't really quite worth it to pick up for like 7 or 8 bucks, and they wouldn't drop them down to $5, so that was the only 360 game I picked up there. Uh, then this stack of uh, DS and one 3DS game, um, two really cool things in here. Uh, the DS games were $5 each. Um, the one 3DS game was $10 each. This store didn't used to split them like that. It was They were always around that $5 mark, and sometimes I could get them a little bit lower if I bought a bunch, but I think they've they've split the pricing now, and all 3DS games are, are $10. Bucks. So these are the DS games I got. Rune Factory. We have Harvest Moon DS, The Tale of Two Towns. Uh, Harvest Moon DS. Animal Crossing. Ugh, almost dropped it. We got Pokemon Soul Silver. Too bad, no outer box, obviously, for that one. And these were the, the two best ones. This I didn't have for my collection. Uh, Digimon World Dusk. And I was very excited to see this little piece of paper in here. And uh, I'm not going to pull it out, but it's a sticker sheet. You can kind of tell if I do this. See the stickers? All the stickers were in there. So I was very stoked about that. Um, to get, Especially to get a five bucks to have all the stickers. And then this at $10... Still was a super steal. Um, it is Cave Story, but it has its lenticular cover, and this stupid cover makes this game so much more valuable. Um, eBay land, this is like a 60-ish dollar game, maybe a little bit more, 60 to 70 dollars, um, in really good shape. But just crazy that that slipcover can literally over double the price of that game. So again, very happy to find that. Uh, then, this was 10 bucks. I picked up a WaveBird controller, uh, really good condition, and it came with its receiver. Um, I can never find the receivers with this, uh, with the controller, so I was very happy to grab it. I actually had gotten four WaveBird controllers recently, and none of them had the receivers. I guess we'll do the random game giveaway right now. Uh, granted, this is from two weeks ago, um, and I have... Ugh, he was stuck in there. I have Mr. Tickle and Snaggle Fruits, and actually, you know what? Let's use... Let's use the wave bird with this. We're going to stick the receiver for the wave bird in Snagglefruits' crotch. And then Mr. Tickle can hold on to the wave bird controller. And then we'll just beat the receiver into his crotch. So here we go. The winner of this week's random game on whatever system they want is... Eh, eh. Lady Firefox. 
congratulations. Thank you for watching. Uh, I didn't want <laughs> I was trying not to throw the controller across the room. Uh, thank you for watching. Please send me a personal message either here on YouTube or on the Facebook fan page. Um, let me know your shipping address and what system you want your random game to be selected for, and I'll have that mailed out to you soon. Um, I actually have packages packed up, ready to go out for past winners from a few weeks ago, so don't worry, your games are on the way. Also, hey, guess what? There's a random game contest starting right now. All you have to do is be subscribed, thumbs up this video, and leave a comment down below. Comment can be about whatever you want, but the suggestion this week is from a guy named Steven. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, has there ever been a game that just kicked your ass so bad you could not get through certain levels? Maybe you couldn't get through like one particular boss or enemy. Maybe you just gave up on the damn game. For me, for some reason, uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts on the PSP kicked my ass more than any of like the Ghouls and Ghosts or Ghosts and Goblins game ever did before. I don't know why that version was so much harder for me. Um, but there's your suggestion. Uh, again, you don't have to use that. You can say whatever you want in the comment section. Just be subscribed. Thumbs up the video. Leave a comment down below. You have until 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday to enter, and the winner is always announced in the following Sunday Pickups video. Okay, as for other stuff to show you guys, uh, this is an interesting story. This stack of games right here came from the game wizard himself, uh, Aaron Kosharski. He had a guy come into his store twice now and just had some amazing things. Um, stuff for pretty much every system. Saturn and I think Sega CD, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, all different types. He got in yesterday um, some really cool Sega Master System things. And uh, one of my smallest collections um, f you know, for a home console is for the Master System, so I was very happy to pick up quite a few. Uh, we have Fantasy Zone, The Maze, and these are all complete. We have Spellcaster. Some of these, sometimes you get those Master System games that have like the really shitty covers, and then some have like some decent artwork on there. Like, I actually like that artwork. That's pretty cool. Uh, then this one's a, a great one. I've been keeping my eye out for it for a few years now. Can never find it. Uh, this one's in fairly good shape. It is Fantasy Star and Altered Beast. And that's a Genesis game. <laughs> And then regular Space Harry, not Space Harry 3D. And then there was one Genesis game I picked up, Target Earth, another one that I've always come across but never seems to have the manual in there. And then one NES game, um, Athena, it was just in really, really nice shape, so I grabbed that. And last up, um, I'm going to pronounce it, I don't know how to pronounce this, Faseli or Fasele with an exclamation mark there for the Neo Geo Pocket, and Pac-Man. Uh, this is the, like, PAL version of Pac-Man. Next is all the stuff that I got from the Too Many Games convention. Um, I'm going to try my best to remember exactly who I got each item from <laughs> and, and the deal we did. Uh, this came from a guy named Keith, and uh, it is a Turbo Booster Plus. Um, ever since I got my TurboGrafx-16, I always wanted to have one of these, and I just never did. They're pretty pricey and very hard to come by. Um, we did a trade, and I ended up getting this for about half of what it goes for. So thank you very much, Keith. Um, it has a few scratches, I you can kind of see there. Scratches and dings on it, but it works. That's all that really matters. Um, next is a PS1 game that... This game in general was honestly at the top of my list to get for the past couple months. Uh, when I did my PlayStation game collection video, uh, I had mentioned that um, this one was one I was really seeking out. It is Jumping Flash, beautiful long box in really good condition, um, completes in there as well. Uh, this walked up to the booth, um, I, I hung out at the Bad Graphics Gamers booth pretty much the whole weekend while I wasn't walking around, and this came up to the booth um, and I was like, oh my god, I need that. Well, the guy uh, was very nice. Um, he, he was trying to work a deal at another booth, like doing a trade. This was originally going to be a part of a trade at another booth. He held off, uh, like, I guess he kept it out of that trade, brought it back, and I was able to get it from him. I got it for 40 bucks. Um, I do not remember his name, but thank you very much, man. These next few games came from Joe Ross. Uh, he was doing some consignment deals where he was selling other people's stuff at his booth. And, uh, these are some heavy hitters. First up, The Space Adventure, and uh, this actually came from Chris Minogue, and Chris had quite a few things for sale um, at Joe's booth. Um, very hard to find in good condition, and expensive Sega CD game. This is based on the uh, Japanese anime Cobra, 
has full motion graphics, very story heavy game, but a great story. I'm very happy to have this in my collection now. Uh, then we have Sonic Jam, which I actually um, sold slash traded a copy of uh, Demon's Crest to Joe, and then I got some money back for it, and then I got Sonic Jam in that deal. And then we also have a copy of Mega Man 8 on the Saturn. And um, I, this is really cool because game-wise, now that's it. That is all the Mega Man games. I have all the Mega Man games. Uh, to really have them all complete in box, all I need is the box and manual for Mega Man 7. And then just the box for Mega Man X3. So if you happen to have a box for either of those, box manual or complete in box when you're looking to get rid of, let me know. I'm willing to uh, try to work out a deal or whatever for those. Um, forgot to mention, <clears throat> when I went to Too Many Games, I took uh, a small amount of cash and a bin full of harder to find, like, complete in box titles, and my goal was to spend the least amount of cash I possibly could, and I actually was going to leave the convention with more cash than I came, and all of the games I brought were gone, and then all, like, new games for myself was in that box, but the last moment I ended up spending, um, almost 200 bucks on a copy, a really clean copy of Harvest Moon. Just another game that I was tired of having it on my want list for so long, and this game just keeps sneaking up higher and higher in price. It's going for now like 230 40 50 dollars sometimes, so I was like, screw it, and you know, before it goes into the 3 or $400 range, I went ahead and grabbed that. So that was the only thing I really truly just spent cash on at the convention. Everything else was either um, a trade deal or money that I had just gotten from selling one of my games and then basically just put it towards getting something for myself. Now I'm going to show you guys a bunch of things I got from the Bad Graphics Gamers and since I was at their booth for most of the weekend I kept seeing really cool things. I was like, oh I want that and I want that and I built up this huge ass stack of games and I had to do some really weird funny things to get a good discount on all those games and at some point on their channel they're going to have a video up from the convention um, and it'll show a lot of the weird things I did. Uh, so, first thing I got from them, Herc's Adventure on the PlayStation, and there's a long, confusing story that goes along with this, but the short version is, Buzzy kept telling people that it was not a complete copy. It is a complete copy. It has the back cover art, manual, game disc, and uh, I had asked about it, like, right at the start of the convention. He had told me it wasn't complete, and then, unfortunately... We found out it was complete, another guy was interested in it as well, and Buzzy was like, sorry, like, I had told him, Scott that it, it wasn't, and he kind of had first dibs on it, and I felt like shit, <laughs> so I actually, uh, it was the guy I got Jumping Flash from, I actually paid a little bit more for the Jumping Flash, because this sort of got, you know, sort of snaked from him, so, apologize again to that guy, but it was all Buzzy's fault in the end, anyway. Um, <laughs> then, a decent stack of some NES games here. We have the Mutant Virus Crisis in a Computer World. And all of their games, for the most part, were just in really nice shape and had little plastic baggies on them or little cases. Uh, the Flintstones Rescue of Dino and Hoppy. Uh, and surprisingly, I didn't have this. I actually had Surprise of Dinosaur Peak before I had this. Kind of weird. Then we have um, Terra Cresta. A game I actually had never seen or come across. Uh, Worm, which is Journey to the Center of the Earth. Uh, Krusty's Fun House, really good condition copy of that. The Simpsons games I always find, they're always beat to hell for some reason. And more NES titles, I got a good chunk of NES games for them. Clue Clue Land. We have Uncharted Waters, that was a nice, really clean copy of that too. Come across that a few times, I actually kind of came across that at a garage sale. People knew what they had, but the label was like half torn off and they wanted like 50 bucks for it. And I was like, nope. Uh, we have Defenders of Dinatron City. And Alfred Chicken, very weird game. I played it, I love, I love this game now. Um, I don't really know why, just such a weird platformer, but Alfred the Chicken. Check that one out if you never heard of it. Uh, this was also one of the first games I got from them. We did a trade. I got a Godzilla 2, and I traded them a copy of Battletoads Double Dragon on the NES. And I got that copy of Battletoads Double Dragon from D of D and Dave on YouTube. This is the uh, Trail of Trades here. And I had traded, to get that copy, I traded D a uh, Gunstar Heroes Complete in the Box on Genesis. And I also got a manual for Kid Clown on the NES, and that leads into this, which is a box. And then that manual is in this box for Kid Clown. This box came from a booth that had 
uh, the box and cart for sale for about the same price that the cart goes for. I bought it, um, I sold the cart while I was there, ended up uh, only paying about then in the end 30 bucks for the box. The manual from D was almost free. I mean, he basically sort of threw it into that other deal, so that was a really good price in the end. Like I said, I had the cart for a long time back when it was like a $30 game or so. So, uh, complete box copy of Kid Clown in the end for a really good price. If you were able to follow along with all those trades and deals, then congratulations, because I got lost in that conversation with myself. Um, then D, Dave, and myself, before the convention even started, went to Chris Minogue's house and picked up a few things. We have, uh, I got the box and paperwork only for the uh, Game Boy Advance SP limited edition, the Who Are You version. And I got a complete box copy of Quest Brian's Journey. This is um, related to Quest 64 on the N64, so if you ever never knew there was another game related to it, there it is. Um, I also picked up, which I don't, is it here? Hold on. Yeah, it's here. Um, this, these two came from Chris as well. Konami Classics Volume 2. Uh, and then Capcom, Clax Cla -ha -ha. Capcom Classics Collection Volume 2 as well. Those were like $5 each. We got Red Ninja. This did not come from Chris. This was just at the convention. Red Ninja in End of Honor. And I was always surprised um, that I could never find this game. It's not expensive, but I've looked at many game stores, um, game hunting out in the wild and everything. I've never come across it, and I've had my eye out for it for a while. And it has, like, booby right on the cover. They did not... Try to hide that at all. It's just whipped out there. <laughs> then, uh, we're getting towards the end. Some more bad graphics gamers pickups. A Super Nintendo stack here. Um, Brawl Brothers. We have... This did not come from them. Um, Realm. Some really obscure ones. Uh, and then Flintstones and Jetsons, both on Super Nintendo. Uh, this um, I got from another booth... Uh, I think on the first day of the convention. Um, he hooked me up with a good price. We talked about concerts and music and YouTube and all different types of stuff. I got Hoshigami, Ruining Blue Earth on the PS1, and Gym Fire on the SNES. And I showed I showed some of this stuff. If, if you watched the VGS episode, I showed some of it there. Uh, I, did, I know I showed these. Ivy the Kiwi on the DS also came out on the Wii. Um, original creator of Sonic the Hedgehog. One of his creations, a little fun, non-stop movement platformer. The character, little Ivy the Kiwi, is always running, and you got to control where it's going with these little, like, rubber band elastic launchy things. Um, Worms Open Warfare, and a fucking weird game, but looks so cool. Um, Barnyard Blast Swine of the Night. I love Halloween-y kind of stuff, and this takes place on Halloween night, so very awesome. Then, is this the last stack? I think we're almost to the end, guys. Uh, some Genesis games. Sword of Sodan, or Sodan. We got The Ooze. Uh, we, this, is, uh, this was interesting to find, complete in box. I kind of picked it up just because I never see Jaguar stuff in the box. Raiden. I think I got that for 40 bucks, I believe. Um, Stormlord, one of the early release uh, Genesis games. And apparently the, trying to find the box for this game is, is pretty hard. A uh, complete copy of Buck Rogers. Um, I had recently picked up a copy of Buck Rogers, but it did not have the manual, so I, I grabbed this one. And then I did a deal. I think it was a, was it a trade. Maybe I just bought it from him. He uh, had just the box and the cart for Seventh Saga. I bought that. I already had the map uh, and the manual for it. I think it's a map. It's either a map or a poster. Um, but I had that, that paperwork with my cart-only copy, so I put it all together for a complete, really nice condition copy. And then last up, I think I lost this game. I don't know what the hell happened to it. It might still be packed away with some of my stuff, but Bonk's Adventure on the TurboGrafx-16. Um, I have a very nice TurboGrafx collection, and when I unpacked most of it, this was not there. So I don't know what the hell happened to my copy. Um, it, like I said, it might still be buried somewhere. But anyways, I, I picked up a Bonk's Adventure just in case if I did somehow lose or misplace or accidentally sold my Bonk's Adventure along the line. But that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, again, some reminders of things. Um, don't forget to enter the random game giveaway. Just be subscribed, thumbs up the video, leave a comment down below. There is a cool, pretty amazing shed game find video coming this Wednesday. Dave from D&Dave &D will be down 
Um, this next weekend, he'll be, we'll go garage sale hunting. Uh, he'll be at the flea market, so stay tuned for videos with Dave and them. And I think that's about it. I love you all. Thank you for watching. Peace!